Welcome to episode two of Reel It In. My name is David Jones. I'm here today with my buddies Daniel Kyatt. Hey guys. And Paul Lindsay. What's going on? And today we're talking about the new Power Rangers movie. We're talking about Gears of War 4, the beta, and the surrounding story to, to, the, new, uh, to the new game. Yeah. And um, also Game of Thrones, which has been incredible this season and it's moving very fast and I can't wait to discuss it. Yes. <laughs> okay, but first of all, Power Rangers. We're soldiers. It's not our job to have a conscience. Maxwell? We've had a breakthrough. Are the morphers ready or aren't they? They are, General. Then we start tonight. You will never beat Lord Death. Who's gonna be strong enough to beat him then? You still hit like a girl. The new suits were revealed recently by Entertainment Weekly. Uh, we know a little bit about it. They, they're definitely mixing and matching. It is the original Ranger names and the colors, but they're definitely playing up uh, a more modern take. Uh, they've mixed the cast up a little bit more. Um, so if you see the original cast, they're basically all white, except for the Black Ranger was black. And the modern take is um, the Blue Ranger is actually the Black Ranger. And we have, uh, it's kind of a fusion for the Black Ranger itself, uh, Johnny Young Bosch, he played the Black Ranger uh, in a few of the earlier seasons of Power Rangers. So now we have a Japanese actor uh, playing the Black Ranger this time. Uh, anyway, so the suits were revealed. What were you guys' initial impressions? Well, I, don't, I didn't. Are the suits, man, they're uh, they're awesome, but I think that's just a little too little too intense. A little too intense. I think they need to bring it back to the old school and, I don't know, just give it a refresh because I feel like it's just too much. The suits are a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. But also, I could also see that. I was like, oh, dude, these suits are awesome. Who knows what they could have in the suits instead of the regular, uh, regular just... The classic well, diamond yeah, pattern. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So then maybe they have some more stuff that they could improvise into them. But, you know, I just kind of feel like it's just, they're awesome. They're good. I just, I just feel like they're just... A little, a little too, too much. Iron, too a little iron too much. Manny. Everybody's talking about their Iron Man suits. What, well, what's your take on it? Well, let's be real. Anything's better than the pajamas they were wearing in the 90s. They were just spandex <laughs> pajamas. That's, that's what they really were. <laughs> they were classics, man. Of course they're classics. We, we grew up they're watching that stuff. Through the loom. I, I watched it too. Right? I don't know. It's, even though when they're fighting the giant pineapple, I don't remember what yeah. his name was but some of the original pajamas. power ranger yeah some of the original power ranger bosses whatever like they were they were like some just of them are actually really a, good mi a mix up of just like random parts it's like some of the pokemon designs these days lord zed was the shit lord zed was the shit yeah, yeah. um but That's one true. one thing i want to talk about with power rangers um is that this new uh revamp this new origin story the rangers actually have alien tech that's what's going on with the suits is it's alien tech um, I don't know where they're going to be to. Yeah, like what what's going to happen? What's going on? But so these these aren't this isn't the classic story of find me five uh, teenagers with attitude. Um, mm -hmm. They teleport to Zordon. This is somehow these these teenagers will obtain the power through some sort of um, extraterrestrial being. Um, I don't know if it's so it could be, be totally different with the same like totally basic different. frame, but could be a totally different storyline, which, you know, that, that could be something that could be interesting. And maybe that goes along with the suits. Yes, absolutely. So then, so and, and the, I feel um, like it's a lot more grounded. Like, it actually could happen. 
mm -hmm. that it's I, I do like ever since we've been doing like a lot of the stuff like a lot of the Marvel stuff things originate from an actual source yeah which is so. nice I feel as though it respects the audience a lot more yes and um, one thing that's really cool about it is um, there's this sort of strange thing going on with Rita Repulsa who is played by Elizabeth mm -hmm. Banks in the movie uh, everybody's talking she's the original Green Ranger so how is that going to tie oh. in? Because so far we've, we've met the, the five, the core five. So what's going to happen in the movie? Like, how are we going to get our sixth ranger? Because you know that there's going to be a Tommy Oliver type character by the mm -hmm. end of the film. He's going to be introduced probably very late or maybe the last thing right before the film ends. I think it'd be the last thing just so people they, could be like, you know what? Everyone's excited yeah. about the five. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden... You know it's coming. Yeah, you yeah, know it's coming. At the very it's end. Bring word you for yeah. another movie. Yes, exactly. So then it leads on to another one. Because let's story, face it, yeah. they're not going to stop. They're no, of course not. No, yeah. I mean, Saban has been producing Power Rangers for like over 20 years now. Mm -hmm. It's a huge franchise. I mean, it's had, it's had its ups and downs. But with this revamp, they're modernizing it in many ways. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. My only condition is I do not want their helmets, their lips, the, the metal, mm -hmm. the metal plate. I do not want it to move. Sucks. Chickens do not have lips. If that if that if they're talking and their metal mouths are moving, that's the only thing that's gonna be a deal breaker for me. I can dig the new suit designs. Uh, I really like. I mean, the the ratio of visor to helmet is a little much. I think that there's too much visor going on. Mm. It's about like that for most of them. Mm. It's a little too much. I think it's a little too high. I like the classic design better, but yeah, I, I, I can live with that as long as the mouths don't move. That's my one condition. No, I agree with that. Because <laughs> they just look silly. The helmets yeah. are just too, I don't know, they, they just look like, they look, just look, they look like they could be potential football helmets. Instead of like bit. natural faces and all that, like, and it just, I just feel like they have tremendous amount of protection. And I don't know, it just looks... But that's a good thing. It looks too more well, revolutionary. It's like Spider-Man. You never see him talk, but you see his mouth kind of jutter around him. Yeah. yeah. So you know he's talking, so it doesn't really really need to have mouths right but yeah, I'm, just, I'm just hoping because I, I i was looking at these um the new suits mm -hmm. and i think that they cast them off of the actors mm -hmm. you know so you have more feminine parts and everybody's complaining about the heels by the way for um trini and for kimberly that's a stupid argument because it was actually a woman designer who designed the suits who put mm -hmm. the heels in i feel it's impractical but whatever it's what they wanted you know and i don't think fan feedback is going to um change that much yeah it's too late I think it'll be built blow over by the time the movie comes out anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's not a big deal. Right, and and my other hope is that they go for more practical effects. I hope the suits are mm -hmm. not CGI. I hope that the helmets are not CGI. I hope, because um, with Iron Man, when they're filming Iron Man, particularly the, the parts where you sort of see inside the suit, mm -hmm. mostly it's, it's, um, it's the helmet is actually overlaid digitally on Robert Downey Jr. Mm -hmm. I would prefer, I want these real. I want the suits real, I want the helmets real, because people are gonna connect with them a lot better. Put in some like LEDs, you know, they have that, mm -hmm. that kind of veiny electronic look to them. The um, power morpher is actually implemented directly into the suit now, it's not a separate part. Oh, the great. suits form around the rangers when they transform. Uh, so, like Iron Man. Yeah, it's very organic. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's alien tech, but it feels more organic. So um, I'm hoping that we get practical effects, like Star Wars, um, and you know, I'm hoping that that trend continues. Yeah, hopefully it does. I mean, I we all watched them when we were kids, and now everyone that generation's grown up now, and then we are all starting to, you know, we demand a little bit more. Yeah, we want yeah, a little yeah. bit more. We're not just kids anymore. It's like, oh my god, you know, flying. No, we want something a little bit more and then, grounded, a little more yeah. grounded. And I'm also excited. Um, I I saw a, I don't know if it's real or not, but I saw a couple concept art pieces uh, for the droid, uh, the Zords. I'm sorry, the droids. Star Wars, um, but the the Zords, and um, I want to see you know the the classics, the T Rex, the Pterodactyl, the Mastodon, oh, yeah, all definitely. those guys, Saber Tooth Tiger. I want all of those to return, and I don't know how they're going to be incorporated, you know, with the alien tech, mm -hmm. but I think it would it's it's exciting to think about and and you know try and and figure out what what they're going to do with this. I, I saw I pictures of them that they kind of look like Transformers. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's what they we'll go. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. But as long as they make it their own, we should be okay. I, I don't want it to be just like this or just like that. Just give it an originality. 
Yeah, That's yeah. That's what I prefer. I kind of like the alien origin story. I'm I excited do. for that. I so feel as though a modern audience will get that immediately. Mm -hmm. And I hope that they do something good with it. I believe that they're actually filming up in Vancouver. I've been trying to keep tabs on everything. You know, it's like it, the information is very tight. It's very... Um, really? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. they're really giving out information left and right because I feel like they're... I don't know. I, maybe they're scared of doing it. That they're, that they're afraid that they're going to mess up because... I, I feel like sure they're bringing they're out, like, they, they, it seems like they've been bringing out, like, a lot of information, like, oh, we just cast the Yellow Ranger, we just cast the... Right, right. Red, oh, no, 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 the casting has been known for a long time. We know the core Rangers, we know Rita Repulsa. And then... We've seen photos of Rita in her new green outfit. And then now the suits are now And the suits now we've seen out. the suits. So then, I'm sure something, I don't know, I just feel like they're, it's not going to be that, that confidential. I, I feel as though they've been pretty tight-lipped about it so far, but I mean it's early in production as far as I can tell. Yeah. We haven't seen much yet. Uh, I, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I don't know about you guys, but that's something yeah, that I'm, 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 I'm really super stoked to it. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's all that we got to say about that. Any last thoughts? No, that's. I just hope it's good. I'm just really excited for it. I just hope it's good. Mm -hmm. I can't it's, wait to see it. It's gonna be kind of hard to keep I'm, up with Marvel. Yeah, and I hope that they just keep that originality and make something different. Not just a rehash of what we have seen and what everything is happening now. Just make it different. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure for, for a modern audience, you know. And, yeah. and if you're gonna if you're gonna tell an origin story, own it. Yeah, exactly. You know, so exactly. And uh, what do you guys think? You know, let let us know in the comments below. Uh, what what do you guys think of the Power Rangers uh, so far? And don't don't bitch about the Iron Man suits because everybody's already talked about that. And we got enough of that. Yeah, enough of that. Uh, moving on. Okay, so Gears of War four. is a game that I honestly never believed I would see. Hmm. Um, so It took a long time to come out. A long, yeah, long time. Yeah, yeah. And you and thought that was it. You thought Gears 3 was very final. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we killed the Locust, uh, the war had ended, and everybody was sort of uh, rebuilding, you know, and moving on from that. I guess I kind of thought that they had to bring out another one, especially with, like because I feel like Gears and Mass Effect, I mean, Ma the way Mass Effect ended, was basically the same thing, like everyone's dead, you know, he's dead, uh, the captain's dead now. And you kind of felt like that was it. So with Gears, with Gears 3, you know, everything's gone now. Right, you thought and it was all wrapped yeah, up. Yeah, it was all wrapped up, but, you know, I kind of felt like, you know, they were like, okay, we got to add something, because let's face it, everyone loves Gears. Everybody loves Gears, it's a fantastic world. Yeah, not and everybody, thankfully, not everybody loves Gears. Not, oh, not, not this guy. I do not. <laughs> okay, I, well, well, most people love Gears. Most people love Gears, I'm not one of those people. I. What's not fun about wielding a giant 60-pound chainsaw gun, dude? It's the third-person perspective as a third as a first-person shooter as they're trying to make it. Oh, okay. Well, I, you know, it depends I on what I do not gun enjoy that. Shot. I feel like I'm just looking over someone's shoulder the whole time, and I can never get the controls down. I'm trying to shoot the locust, and it feels like I'm not even shooting them. It's true. There's, there's, there's well, that's a, a lot of first person, that's a lot of shooter games now. It's like you're shooting over their shoulder now. Yeah. I mean, they do make settings for it now where... You can switch it over to first person, but I don't know. I just feel like, you know, just the, the storyline and all that, I feel like it's a really good storyline. Right. Okay, and so, I feel like so everyone's going to play for a game. The can't. thing is, when you have a great storyline, if the gameplay sucks, you're never going to watch or get through the rest of the game to see it. Right. So right. if you have a great story and shitty mechanics, I mean, it, some people are not going to finish your game. I agree. Uh, I agree. But, but, um, I just want to give a little overview. So, Gears of War 4. It takes place uh, 25 years after the end of Gears of War 3. We have a whole new set of characters. We have J.D. Phoenix, which is Marcus Phoenix's son, his friend Delmont, or Del, and then they are paired up with Kate. And now the what I have pieced together um, is 25 years later, the cog has become oppressive. And they're sort of this, the, you know, they're in charge of the world, mm -hmm. but they're, they're not very nice. So J.D. and Del go AWOL. And they leave and they go and join this other band of outsiders. Um, and Kate is actually the daughter of the leader of the outsiders. Mm -hmm. So these three pair up and they're trying to survive. And everything that the trailers have said so far, it's, it's back to survival horror. There's very dark corridors and scary monsters. And it's not Locust anymore, but we do still have a drone character as well as the um, the pouncer, I believe, and it's the swarm now. The swarm, yeah. So, so so the locust is gone, but now they're um, being replaced by the swarm, uh, which is pretty scary. They're even freakier than the locust. They're less. I mean, I thought that the, some of the locust drones were cute. Uh, my favorite was the one with the goggles. He's a sniper. I called him goggles. 
So I don't think we can, uh, I don't think I'm going to have the same relationship with the swarm as I did with the locust. They're much more serious and scary. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just a, something that just brings something different, something new. And, then, you know, it could be the same. I mean, maybe they don't want to make it seem like, okay, here, let's leave, okay, 25 years. And, but realistically, it's just basically just like what Gears of War 1 is. Kind of like what Star Wars did to Episode Seven. It was just basically, right, right. It was uh, just basically went back episode to four. the root. It was oh, yeah, basically just episode four. started on Episode Seven. So, <laughs> so basically, maybe that's why, and maybe that's why they did the new characters. Maybe that's why everyone's gonna love it because it's different now. Right, and they can right. show that it's oh, it's actually twenty five years because now the swarm or locusts. You know, who knows that maybe locusts turned into the swarm now. And oh, maybe it's like a, yeah. a, a evolution or something yeah, like that. So maybe, yeah, so maybe something like that. There so are some we'll big see. questions that are lingering. Like, first of all, okay, where did the swarm come from? And second of all, what's going to happen in the story? So you start off as an outsider. You're outside of everything, okay? You're just surviving with this group. I'm wondering, okay, first of all, you get attacked by the swarm, but where's the story going? Uh, how do we interact with the cog? You know, and also... Will we see the return of any legacy characters? Will we see uh, Marcus Phoenix? You know, I mean, JD, the the premise behind JD is he is living in his father's shadow. Mm -hmm. And he does not want, you know, it's, it's a lot of pressure. How do you live up to the war hero status of Marcus Phoenix? Mm -hmm. That's his problem. That's his inner conflict. So, of course, he's like, whoa, dude, this is too much. I'm out, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm out of here. Um, so, what's going to happen? I think, uh, I don't know. Let's just say, I think all four characters die, and I think I think I'll show it in the first monologue. I think all the other ones would just. We well, Dom died in Gears they, Three. Okay, well, Dom I is think gone. They're dead, so that everyone writes them off, and they show up at some point in the game. That would be cool. That would they're be like, awesome. That would like, be awesome. They're but like then how they're older, gonna... wiser, badasses yeah. who like come and save your butt. Because you have, I mean, Baird is still around. I'm sure that he contributes. I mean, he's smart. I'm sure that in the 25 years that have passed since Gears 3, he's made um, like amazing contributions to the tech mm -hmm. and to reestablishing civilization. Mm -hmm. And Marcus Phoenix, he's a war hero. So, I mean, that in itself, he's the reason why they exist. Yeah. And then, for some reason, the Coalition is trying to hide the fact that, oh, okay, well, who's JD's mom? Well, it's Anya. Obviously, it's Anya. Mm -hmm. At the end of Gears 3, Anya and Marcus get together. Duh. And, and I don't know why that would be a surprise. And also, one of the things that I'm wondering is, uh, I saw an interview with one of the guys from the Coalition, and he stated that by the end of Gears 4, you're going to be wondering all these possibilities, what's, you know, what are these guys going to do, what's happening next? And the interviewer, I believe it was on GameSpot, he's like, that sounds like one hell of a cliffhanger. And <laughs> the developer's like, yeah. <laughs> so, big story. Go for uh, the beta. Go for the beta? Okay. Yeah, so, the beta... Um, was it just ended recently, and it's a very Nasher-focused game, again, uh, which is good and bad. They have a lot of really cool new weapons. They have the Drop Shot, which is a sort of mine launcher, and what you do is you will, uh, the longer you hold the button once you fire, the mm -hmm. farther the drill slash bomb will go, and then as soon as you let it go, it'll drill down and explode, yeah. which is awesome. This is going to be a really crazy weapon to use. Uh, the Torque Bow, as far as I know, has been tightened up, and the Lancer's back, of course. And then we have the, I think it's called a Buzzkill or a Buzz, what is it called? I think it's a Buzzkill. Yeah, so the Buzzkill is this crazy, it almost seems like a metal blade Mega Man weapon. You fire it and it'll ricochet off the walls. And even after like four or five ricochets, you can hit somebody and kill them. Mm. Pretty crazy, pretty awesome. Um, and, you know, of course, it's Gears of War, lots of blood and lots of big giant bodies just being splattered into pieces. Um, so, did you guys get to check out the main at all? Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm just not a big multiplayer multiplayer guy. I'm more, I didn't really care about it. Uh, I wish the guns would probably be a lot bigger, uh, better. Uh, I just don't want it to turn into basically like a shotgun game. You know, I just, I want more variety towards game, uh, towards the, uh, yeah, towards, right, uh, right. towards weapons. So, you know, I just, I just kind of hope that, uh, I just kind of hope the Guns will get a little bit better, and then I just care about the campaign. I just want to see where it's going to go. Right, good story. I'm, I'm hoping that by leaping ahead in time, uh, you know, they, they, they said in an interview, again, that I watched, um, that they could have easily just been like, okay, well, at the end of Gears 3, the Locusts were still there, and let's move on, and let's not develop the world any further. But I think it's more interesting to jump ahead in time with this new cast of characters and play with a new beginning. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it freshens the story up. Absolutely. That's important. The one thing that I didn't like what I saw, I didn't play the beta, but I've seen a lot of clips online, like IGN and YouTube, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I was unimpressed by the graphics. Really? Very oh my god, it's beautiful. Very it's impressive. 1080p running at 60 frames per second. What more could you guys want? It's I, don't, I like the graphics. Gra it's, it's, it's beta graphics. graphics I, li I like the graphics. I really like the graphics. Oh yeah, I think it's gorgeous. I, I, maybe you're using I a felt they were very close to Gears of War 3 from what They're I was saying. They're worse. They're so worse. worse. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I could have made a better game than this, but, and I don't even have Maya skills. I come on, you guys. <laughs> oh it's man. Like, it's the, I think they had how many how many years to make this game, make, <laughs> develop it, and decide. You know what? I feel like using an advanced engine. And I, there's it, Unreal it the Engine same. Four. Unreal, Unreal Engine Four is powering uh, Gears of War Four, which mm -hmm. is kind of cool. Unreal, Unreal it's cool. Four. I like it, the Unreal Gears Engine Four. I like it. Unreal and Havoc. I like those two engines. Yes, definitely. Okay, sure. So uh, right now we're going to take a look at uh, the Gears of War 4 trailer. It's very eerie, they're always atmospheric, and uh, here you go. Okay, so final thoughts on Gears 4. Um, you guys are hopeful for the campaign, not really crazy about the multiplayer? Yeah, pretty much. I, I'm not a huge multiplayer fan anyway. I've played so much Halo, I've played so much Call of Duty, I've played Counter-Strike, mm -hmm. you know, when it was CS 1.6 way back in the day. So I've played way too much and everything is just a rehash of the same old thing. I'm getting a little tired of it. Um, I, you know, I think that going, because uh, with Gears 4, they're actually taking really competitive rankings. So you can go from bronze to silver to gold, all the way up to diamond, and then if you are a pro player, if you are so high on that tier list, you can get a master ranking, which sounds really cool to me. I'm hoping that it's not a grind fest where, you know, like, I didn't like, kills. yeah, I didn't, I mean, it's gonna be crazy to do that. But the thing that I don't like about Halo 5 is that with the rec system, everything is random. I like being able to work for specific goals. If I want a certain skin, if I want a certain gun, I don't want to buy it. I we want to it earn it. <laughs> well, we'll see I want to earn it. Let me play. This is my reward for being good at the mm -hmm. game. I don't want to, like, I mean, Halo 5 just released Memories of Reach. I love the update. It brings infection and stuff like that. But, dude, they have a special pack where it's 120,000 rec points yeah. or $15, and you get this epic uh, rec pack. But the thing is... They say that you have to buy it four times in order to complete the set. So they want another sixty dollars for no. the complete. Yeah, no, no, no yeah. No. Games are starting Just to come no. out unfinished. No, no, no. But that's, Gears that's of War bad. Four, but Gears of War Four is going to be, is going to be a good game. Yes, and I'm agree. really excited for that. The Coalition uh, looks like they're doing a wonderful job. I can't wait to see more. Hopefully, we'll see more at E3. Yeah. Game hopefully. launches October twenty first of this year, I believe. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Okay. So, next is... so, next topic, Game of Thrones. Uh, Game of Thrones is in its sixth season. It's a, an amazing show on HBO, and if you're not watching it, you should watch it. Basically, for the uninitiated, uh, Game of Thrones is a story about warring families trying to compete for the Iron Throne. The Iron Throne of the Seven Kingdoms is the highest throne, the, uh, the highest level of royalty that you can achieve, mm -hmm. and it's a bloody throne. Yes. It is literally made of swords. Um, so, Literally. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, uh, I'm digging the sixth season. What do you guys think? I am very excited for the sixth season. I'm excited that they started doing stuff in the beginning. Um, spoiler alert, there'll be a lot of spoilers here. So, if you don't want any Absolutely. spoilers, turn this off right now. You've been warned. And I think Jon Snow coming back to life was a good choice. Yeah. I like that they didn't drag it out. They did it very quickly. 
Yes, absolutely. Season six is moving at a very fast pace. We have now surpassed the book material, and now the show is establishing its own uh, rhythm. It's, it's going really fast uh, through this new material, and a lot of crazy stuff has happened. So what do you think so far of uh, where, where everything stands? So right now, currently, it is May 17th, and we have the, the Lannister family is just done with the High Sparrow. We have them finally working together with Marjorie's grandmother and their uncle to sort of plan to overthrow this, uh, this cult out of uh, Westeros, out of um, King's Landing. And then we have uh, Bran is still doing all of his, uh, sightseeing. All of his sightseeing and stuff like that, developing, developing his powers. Uh, we have Tyrion, who is sort of the uh, improvised... Uh, this is the King stand-in. Queen's liaison, mm-hmm. and and everybody is mad at him right now. He's everybody's sort of unsure. You have Grey Worm and Missande on one side, and then you have the the slave masters. Now, the agreement that they have right now, and we're not sure if people are going to follow through, is they have to abolish slavery in the next seven years. Mm-hmm. How do you think that's going to play out? I think the seven years is just a, a ploy. I think Tyrion has something else in his back pocket. Absolutely, he's think- always got something. I think he's just trying to butter him up so that they trust him, and then he's going to infiltrate somehow and find a way to dispatch them. Okay, and what do you think? What do you think is going to happen? Because we have these buildups, we have all these setups. Okay, so in the coming weeks, what do you think is going to happen with the High Sparrow? Let's talk about that. Uh, the High Sparrow is played by Jonathan Price, which I like a lot because I, I remember the first time I saw him was Tomorrow Never Dies, okay. the James Bond film. He does a great job. I don't want his character to die because I like that he basically bitch slaps every single person who needs to be bitch slapped in the high places without really hitting him. It's really crazy. He is mind effing everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody, like even Tommen. Even Tommen, yeah. the king of King's Landing. I mean, granted, he's, he's still young. Uh, he came to him. He was saying, what have you done? You know, my mom was just walked through the streets. I want, you know, I want this to end. What else does she have to do? High Sparrow sits him down, calmly talks to him. and I thought he was going to like arrest him or something in that scene. I, I was like, too. something's going to happen. He's I thought too. Alter. But you <laughs> can see that, Ta- okay, there's sort of two things happening. Either Tommen is being brainwashed mm. by the High Sparrow, which which High Sparrow is, that's what he does, man. I don't know. He's, he's a crazy psychologist. <laughs> uh, or the other thing, the other thing is, is Tommen is, is seeing this man for what he really is. And we don't know exactly who he is or what his goal is mm-hmm. what do you think his goal is because he's he's got a lot of power right now i think that his goal is just to just to give the people a chance i think that he came must have been from somewhere somewhere very impoverished somewhere where he doesn't want power but he doesn't want anyone else to have power as well so well, kind actually of, actually kind of last vacuum. last night's episode we uh we heard the high sparrow's backstory the backstory for the high sparrow was he was he uh he made shoes mm. he made shoes and then he made better That's why shoes he doesn't wear. and then well <laughs> but so what happened was he was a big partier and he threw this really big extravagant party with all these rich people and then he realized wait that's not what i want and so he abandoned all of that. He went to the streets. He went to the people. And he's been like that ever since. That's what he claims. Okay, so what's interesting about him is he doesn't want power, or so he says. He doesn't want riches. He doesn't want women. Uh, but it's like he's still a mystery to me. He's still a mystery to me, and everybody's fed up with him, particularly the Lannisters. Mm-hmm. I think in the next couple of episodes, he's going to get his. Mm. I say so, too. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think he has something else up his sleeve still. Yeah, I th- I he's a very he's mysterious character. He, yeah, he's got something going on because he's got his in, like he's there's two armies sort of competing for power. I don't know. I think his luck ran out. You think his luck ran out? Yeah. I I don't know, man. He's uh, he's a pretty tricky character. So we have uh, the Kingsguard in King's Landing, and then we also have the the Brotherhood cult, uh, and and that of course is controlled by the High Sparrow. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things at play. And I can't wait to see how that plays out. Now, in Winterfell, we have Ramsay Bolton, the bastard son of Roose Bolton. He has taken over. That guy. He has Rickon, and he just killed Osha. Like, what the hell? Yeah, exactly. I, I, I was hoping, I was hoping. Just killed the hot one. 
Well, not only that, but I was hoping that we could finally do away with Ramsey Bolton. He is he, evil. His luck is running out. Yeah, I hope He's so. He's going to die very soon. I, he, he better is, die very soon. He is scary. He is really scary. Oh. Oh, yeah. I mean, everybody hated Joffrey for what he did. And granted, I'm not excusing Joffrey's um, actions, but dude, Ramsay is messed up. He He's straight up level. murdered his dad. He mm -hmm. murdered his dad. He sicked his hounds on his um, stepmother and an infant. Mm -hmm. I mean, what will this man not do? Yeah. He's crazy. And, I, you know, we got Jon Snow and Sansa sort of planning to go back to Winterfell and reclaim it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that's going to play out. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think Ramsay's going to get his? He's going to get his. I don't know when and or by who, but I know he, he's got his shit coming. Yeah, they're gearing up for a crazy, pretty crazy battle. Now, I, believe I hope it's Theon. I thought I'd never like Theon again, but now suddenly I do. And Which... Theon is home now. Theon finally made it back to the Iron Islands. He's back with his sister, and she reluctantly takes him uh, back, accepts him back. But it's sort of, it's sort of up in the air, like what's going to happen with those guys. Yeah. Theon, I hope Theon is really Theon. And I really hope that he doesn't suddenly turn back into Reek, because that would be just such a bummer. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I mean, oh, scary stuff. Yeah, the only Game of Thrones can make me hate a character so much, be glad that he's being tortured, and then go, maybe this is too much torture. Why don't you just kill him now? Right. And he's still alive and he's still being tortured. And I'm like, you can stop now. Yeah. You can stop torturing this the, guy. Um, he did some shitty things, but he's getting... He's getting his bell wrong for this. Yeah. Oh, for sure, Definitely. man. Yeah, yeah. Ram Ramsey killed Osha. Like, yeah, dude. And then, okay, let's so... Let's get to that last part, though. Yeah, let's get to that last part. So, Daenerys uh, was sort of on trial by all the calls. She's in the sacred city. Um, and we have Sir Jorah Mormont. And what is his... Her lover? I don't know, her, I don't know his name. Uh, starts with a D. I want to say Dorian or Doran. Yeah. Some, some, I think. Anyway, we'll cut Darius. that part. Darius. Darius? Okay. Oh, yeah. Dario. Dario, Dario. that's okay. his name. So, Sir Jorah Dickless. Mormont and... I'm a second actor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. He got recast. Um, so, we have Sir Jorah Mormont and Dario... Uh, no, Harris? Believe so. Something like that. Um, we have them infiltrate the Call City. The sacred city where you cannot have weapons. And, um, basically, they spring a trap. They, they infiltrate the city. They kill a couple of the Dothraki. The and then you have... Daenerys in trial with all of the calls in the room and she pulls off her second fire trick which is amazing so what happens is they're trying to say oh okay well you're not going to be a widow you're not allowed to do that we are going to basically rape you to death and she says no no I think I'm going to no. leave the death racky and she <laughs> torches the entire hut she, t she, she kills every call that's in there and emerges, again, um, unscathed, uh, and, yeah, behind a blaze of glory. So, of course, everybody, uh, man, woman, and child, all the Dothraki are just like, okay, you're our leader. <laughs> so now she has control of the Dothraki. Mm -hmm. What do you think she's going to do next? I think she's going to try and come back to Marine and uh, take the Dothraki to try and just clear out Slaver's Bay again. I think she's okay. going to try and run through it again. But I'm glad that that happened very quickly. I was afraid yes. she was going to be stuck in that temple, just trying to bullshit with all the, the women and try and get her way out. All the widows. I thought it was going to take the whole season of this, and I'm just like, oh, I don't look forward to this. That's so what I like so, so much bad. about season six is... Start to wrap it up with final thoughts. Yeah. Sure, sure. sure. To take it off. Oh, okay, all right, cool. So you think you think she's going to go back to Marine and uh, reclaim it? Yeah, absolutely. I hope she stays topless. <laughs> kind of open for that. Yes. Well, <laughs> yes. Yeah. In her contract, that. she picks and chooses when she can be nude now. So. Don't give me the facts. I don't know. <laughs> burn, burn the contract. Just watch the first two seasons. There's plenty of her tits. It'll yeah. Fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so Game of Thrones is in a very crazy spot. A lot is happening. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, what do you think of season six, and where do you think the show is going? It's kind of crazy because now it's on its own. It's blazing its own path now that we're out of the book material. Mm -hmm. Where do you think it's going to go? Let us know. I'm very happy with where it is. Let's see. Thank you so much for joining us on episode two of Reel It In. Uh, next week, we'll have more awesome topics, but we want to hear from you. Let us know. What do you think of the show so far? What do you think of what we're discussing? Um, and what do you think we should talk about next? What do you think we should talk about next? Yeah, yeah, some topics. Stuff. Because we're running out of ideas. So please let us know. We're running out of good ideas. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, take care, guys. We'll see you next time. I'll plug it in next episode.